Welcome. In this presentation, we're going to show you a tool that will automate your ESXi installations. Hello, and my name is Jesse Bushhouse. I work with Tech Systems as a Senior Lab Systems Engineer. And I've got Michael Slowick with me. He's a software engineer at Cisco. So what are some of the challenges you run into when trying to automate the ESXi installation? Well, first of all, there's no IP address, mainly because there's no operating system. And not a lot of tools will work in that situation. The KVM GUI is the most common entry point, but automating a GUI can be unreliable. Now, I've actually published a script that will help set the IP address of an ESXi host, and it'll do so by blindly sending keystrokes into your KVM GUI. Now, even this tool, it only works after the operating system's been installed, so it's not a complete solution. Then you have the kickstart file, and this is actually the technology we're gonna use in this tool. But some of the problems you may run into using a kickstart file is if you make a generic kickstart file, it'll install your operating system, but it won't set the IP address. And if you make a kickstart file with an IP, it's only good for one server. So it's difficult to do mass deployments that way. So with that, I'd like to introduce the ESXi auto installer. It's going to install your operating system. It's gonna make mass deploys really easy. It's going to set a unique IP address to host and it will enable SSH. It does all this without you ever having to see that yellow ESXi console screen again. Now, specifically, we don't do a lot of configuration of the ESXi host here because you already have tools to manage and configure your host. So we're not trying to replace those tools. We're trying to enable them. This tool, if you have a specific ESXi version number or a custom ISO that you want, this tool will support that. If you want to install into a iSCSI boot drive, this tool supports that. And we have APIs for additional automation. So for example, if you have an inventory system that already has your IP addresses, you could push those to this tool using the APIs and start the installations automatically. You can then check the status, and if there's installation errors, you could send notifications. Or if the installation is successful, you could start your additional management or automation. Now in the future, we'd like to give you Pixie installs. Now we actually have this working in-house already. We just weren't able to polish it in time for this presentation. So watch the GitHub. We find that Pixie installs, um, they're a little more difficult from a network perspective, but they work on any server, including virtual machines, because Pixie installs don't use that Cisco IMC. So here's the workflow of the tool. First of all, it's gonna take some information, such as the Cisco IMC IP address and the ESXi IP address. Then it's going to generate an ISO file with a unique kickstart file for every server. It's going to use the Cisco IMC to mount those files, to mount those ISOs, and then it's going to reboot the server. And then you can track the progress using the tool to know if there's been an installation error or if the installation is successful. Now, Michael's done most of the programming for this project, and he's going to give us a demo. So go ahead, Michael. Thank you, Jesse, for the introduction. Before we start the demo, I wanted to quickly sum up technologies used in Auto Installer. It is a Flask application running behind a web server like Apache. It uses IMC SDK to trigger actions on target UCS server. Kudos here to David Soper and UCS Business Unit for delivering and maintaining this SDK. And it all runs on a Linux system. Let's now have a look at the product itself. So as the very first step after deploying auto installer in your environment, you have to upload at least one ESXi installation ISO, which you can download from official VMware website. In our scenario, we can use one of the images already uploaded. So let's start. First, we select the installation ISO. I'm going to look to pick the latest hypervisor version. And then we have to provide some ESXi configuration details. You can see that, for instance, root password and a few other network details I've already pre-filled before the demo. So we have to start with the VLAN ID because in our case, the servers are going to use VLAN 14. As for the management VM NIC, all three servers used for the demo have their VM NIC zero cables, so no change required here. The installation disk, all choosing from few alternatives. Again, this is one-to-one -one matching official VMware documentation for the Kickstarter file. So the simplest option, option is first disk found, but in certain scenarios, you can you may want to use disk of certain time. Like for iSCSI storage, you would use 
network storage. In our case, we're selecting option one. The enable SSH option is selected per default as it allows for the troubleshooting or automation like Jesse mentioned. And the last option allows choosing if the disk should be erased before the installation. The second part of Auto Installer main page focuses on SIMC credentials and some network details. Now, some of those, again, I've already pre-filled before the demo. So let's fill in those few missing details like hostname prefix, suffix. Now, these are optional, but you may have noticed that the resulting hostname is actually built using that prefix, suffix, and the numeric value in the table. Now, having the management IP address and CMC IP addresses already in the table, I can quickly add more hosts by simply clicking Add Row. As you can see, the numeric value of ESXi hostname as well as the IP addresses get incremented. Of course, if your servers are addressed sequentially, you can adapt these values to your needs. Like in my case, the third machine has its CMC in a different subnet. And that's all word work required on our side. Once we hit that start button, the auto installer will execute essentially three tasks for each server. It will generate a kickstart file, then it will generate an ISO with that kickstart file embedded, and it will then log into server SIMC via XML API, mount the ISO, and reboot the machine. After triggering the installation, auto installer takes us to the status page where we can see deployment status for all jobs. If everything goes as expected, we should see the status for our jobs being changed to installation in progress in a few minutes. It, you can, at the moment, you can see it's doing some different actions like logging to SIMC and then mounting installation ISO. You can also see job logs from here. This may be especially useful in cases when you receive an error and you want to troubleshoot underlying root cause. As one of the challenges was to know when the installation exactly finishes and update job status accordingly, we have implemented a simple API. This allows to interact with auto installer programmatically and for instance, get the list of all jobs, get details for a specific job or update job status. And this last API call is actually used by ESXi server to inform auto installer when the installation finishes and change the job status accordingly. And that concludes the demo. I believe we have covered all main features of current release. We are still actively developing the product, so please check our GitHub repository for the latest updates. Thank you, Michael, for the demo. And so here's the link where you can go download the product. It is live now. Thanks for watching.